नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम वेलकम टू द एडिटोरियल एज द डेली न्यूज़ एनालिसिस ऑन स्टडी आई क्यू आई ए एस इंग्लिश वंस अगैन वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल दोज ऑफ यू हु आर जॉइनिंग मी दिस मॉर्निंग आई एम भुवन अपूर्व झा योर कॉन्स्टेंट फ्रेंड अर्ली मॉर्निंग एंड वंस अगैन आई वेलकम ईच वन ऑफ यू हु एवर इज जॉइनिंग मी लाइव एंड दोज हु विल बी वॉचिंग मी इन द कोर्स ऑफ द डे एंड द डिफरेंट आफ्टर दैट Hi Rajan how are you good morning thanks for joining again thank you thank you all right so uh, on the agenda for today is two articles two particular in fact ideas concepts thoughts the way you want to understand it and we will take a look at the full spectrum analysis of those two topics okay the first one because again i don't want to waste much time here so the first topic that i have for you is on the defense indigenization of india now this is again a topic that has been in the news Good morning Bipen good morning Bulbul welcome welcome everyone welcome so the defense indigenization is something that again uh, is of prime importance not just because again uh, it is to do with economics it is to do with uh, the self reliance the atmanirbharta okay but also as to how it uh, augments india's position in the global community of nations okay so we'll take a look at defense indigenization we'll take a look at what ordinance factory board is what dpsus are uh and and what's the way forward what are the challenges that the whole indigenization process is facing rajan i'm so grateful for your comment so grateful thank you thank you for that thank you for your message seriously rajan good good to see that you know these are the small things that as mentors you like to hear so anyways uh coming back to the topic so defense indigenization is something we'll take a look at extensively okay uh especially again if you look at it from the mains perspective the one analysis that you can be uh, expected to probably put forward is not just why are you indigenizing uh, from the defense in the defense sector not just say from the national security perspective but also from how it can improve india's economy you know how it can be a strategic leverage for india for example if you ha- must have been reading your newspapers recently you must have uh, read that india is now exporting arms and and defense related equipments to another 70 plus nations so now this shift how did that shift happen and what could be the way forward how can that 70 go to 100 150 all of that we'll see okay and the second topic that i'm wanting to uh, discuss provided i have time in the last 10 minutes 15 minutes is about the pandharpur yatra the varkari okay the pandharpur yatra or the varkari yatra is one of the most significant events in the state of maharashtra okay if you look at it the national calendar this is the one event that stands out okay so what is the varkari yatra and and what is to do with say pandharpur yatra what is the different tangents to it and from the prelims perspective it, it would serve you well to know about it theek hai so we'll get started because there's no point wasting time there's a lot of uh, understanding here to do obviously we'll take a look at the mains questions as well as the mcqs this topic the varkari yatra given if i can com- complete this in say 40 45 minutes if i can do this to my level of satisfaction in 40 45 minutes then we will do this in the last 15 in case if this overshoots then i will make a separate video because varkari yatra is something to do with spirituality and religion and it deserves a lot of seriousness okay i don't want to just complete it in 10 minutes and then not do justice to the whole idea the whole thought process behind varkari yatra so but then again these two will be the agenda of the day so we'll uh, straight away jump into the topic now and let's look at this mains question first guys as always we'll begin our morning with a mains question so we'll say take a look at this question guys okay forgive this uh, misalignment i'm not very good with slides i'll eventually get better okay <laughs> so let's look at this mains question a successful defense industry is responsible not just for india's security but also provides strategic leverage what is strategic leverage you know it something advantage leverage is advantage so it gives a strategic advantage with other countries so we are going to analyze this bulbul will discuss we'll discuss uh, exactly what's the concept right now and and so straight away we'll understand that okay we have always been an import heavy defense country you know most of our arms equipments ammunition would probably be sourced from other countries and that's not uh, incorrect you know if you look at the sipri report okay if you look at the sipri the sipri report it says that uh, we are the second largest importer just after saudi okay 
So we'll discuss all of that. We'll come to that. And then the prelims question, the prelims point of view. Have a look at this. The right to bear arms was admitted as a fundamental right into 1931 Karachi resolution which was drafted by Gandhi. Which means that in the 31 resolution there was a provision that everyone can uh, carry arms. Just like say you have in the United States, you know, where gun is a very sensitive issue, possession of gun, gun carriage is a, possess, uh, is a very sensitive issue. Uh, so similar proposal, was it made in India in 1931 in the Karachi resolution? We'll discuss, we'll see. The first ordnance factory in India was set up in West Bengal. All components of the ordnance factory board are now converted into defense public sector units. Which of the above are correct? Don't worry if you don't know the answer to this. You know, that's the whole point so that we learn. Okay. Good, good. Nalajana. Well done. You already have a basic idea. Good. I'm impressed. Good. Bahut badia. So, we'll take a look at all of this. Theke? If you do know the answer to this or if you want to attempt it, I suggest you attempt it. You know, this is how you'll remember, guys. So, attempt it and without googling, obviously. Attempt it and let me know the answer in the chat. Okay. All right. So, let's jump straight into the topic. The first topic, the first agenda that I have for you is India's defense policy sustainable? And is India's defense import ban a good move? Now, these two questions, obviously, I'm asking them. But please understand that the answers to that will follow in the coming slides. Okay. You have to understand that a particular policy, however well intentioned, and, and so everything is right with the policy, but you should still look at the negative side of the policy. As uh, civil service aspirants, you have to consider both sides. Okay. You cannot uh, just be taking one side. You can't be doing that. So we'll take a look. Obviously, the basic idea that the class has is that uh, defense indigenization is will, will create forex. Uh, it will basically help us in our economy. It will create jobs. All that is good. But then, if you were to just think for two minutes, what could be the negative fallouts of this? Or what could be the challenges? Not even the negative fallouts. What could be the challenges of, say, defense indigenization? Okay. As a aware student, as an aware student, just think for two minutes while we go ahead with the discussion. Okay. We'll discuss these two questions in particular today. Okay. All right. So, first, let's understand exactly what is defense indigenization. Now, the Honorable Prime Minister in 2014, he came up with the Make in India initiative. You know, Bharat mein banao. So, under Make in India plus Atma Nirbhar Bharat, okay, the ability to produce and develop any defense equipment within the territorial boundary of the country. Okay. Now, so what does it serve? What, what does it help us? How does it help us? One, obviously, is you become Atmanirbhar. You don't have to rely on, say, other countries to source your own particular uh, arms and equipment. Okay. And then at the same time, you are going to reduce your burden of imports, that the bill that comes and so uh, the, the deficit that exists, well, you are going to narrow it down. So it's going to help the economy. Right. Now, please understand this first. What happens when you buy, say, arms and ammunition from outside? What could be negative ramifications of that? So now you know that most of the arms and ammunition, suppose if you are, say, buying from X country, okay, you are buying from X country and you are buying, say, equipment A. Now you must have seen or you must have noticed also that X country, if it is giving you, say, a particular arms and equipment and ammunition, Nothing stops it from giving the same arms and ammunition to your adversary. Okay. At the same time, if you look at the Chinese example, where they give arms and ammunition, which is often considered to be, say, uh, corrupted, you know, their semiconductors and their tech could finally compromise the national security of the country to which they have given their arms and ammunition. You know, because again, technology is involved. If they have the source code, of that particular uh, uh, whatever technology that they have developed, well, you are going to be always in that doubt. Can our uh, missiles be controlled by them? What's the sanctity of the equipment that I have? Which is why it's important that you develop your own tech, you develop your uh, own arms and ammunition. Good, good dance floor. Bahut badia. Yes, obviously, all of that are the positive uh, 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 consequences that you're telling me, guys. Please, for a moment, identify the negative ones. Think for a moment. Play the devil's advocate and then we'll understand the concept better. Okay. So now, what is the concept? What is the goal here? 
it is to create firstly an ecosystem very very important guys this is what this is the infrastructure the structural change that we often talk about no? so how do you create a particular ecosystem you identify all the stakeholders you empower each of them and then you say promote research and development and faster integration with the defense services threefold process identification of stakeholders which people are part of this ecosystem okay then you empower them basically give them the means the facilities to do what they are supposed to do okay thereafter invest in research and development and then after you have come up with the product whatever you have developed say a gun ak 47 you have developed whatever indigenous variety of the ak 47 so now that needs to be translated from the lab or from the testing facility to in the hands of the soldier so faster integration of that is required okay faster integration so this is the natural process that you are looking at okay whenever you are creating an ecosystem this is for any any product this is how you are going to do it okay so the goal is to create an ecosystem to design develop and manufacture most students would think that it is just about manufacturing defense indigenization no it is also to do with designing it is to do with developing say particular equipments that are best suited for your requirement okay <clears throat> india spends across well obviously these facts and figures are damning no three percent of our gdp we are spending on what defense purposes fifth highest in the world and yet all arms of the military have urgent need for upgradation if you look at it well uh, some of our uh, particular equipment is outdated. Some we are lacking in say, certain areas in a massive manner. Okay, so which is why it is of utmost importance, critical importance that you quickly develop the technology that is required to replace the old and aging uh, arms, equipment, fleet, whatever you understand it as. Okay, so again, from the national security perspective, very important, right? So once you have understood this, that this is the whole thrust of the matter, that you are essentially looking to harness your own domestic capabilities to serve your own country. That your arms, your equipments, your missiles, all of that are developed in-house. That you don't have to say be reliant on Russia or whatever other countries, Israel for drones, Russia for the other arms and ammunitions, no. Okay, some part we can get or some amount of import is desired. Because innovation can't just be limited to India. No? Everyone is innovating. So obviously as friendly allies, as friendly foreign countries, you would want some certain amount of information exchange to happen. Obviously that is a given. That's what globalization is. But at the same time, you have to make sure that your domestic capability is such that if tomorrow say your supply chain with Russia was to be compromised or say something happens with India-Israel relations and if they refuse, well, you shouldn't be like, oh my God, what's my plan B? So, this is why it's important. From the national security perspective, very, very important. All right? Okay, okay. We'll discuss, guys. So, why is the need for defense indigenization policy? Why was this thought of by uh, the central government, the union government? Now, like most of you have given me the answer to this, which is good. Obviously, you're looking at reducing the deficit, like I told you. Okay? Second largest arms importer just after Saudi. Okay. Highest import dependency leads to increase in the fiscal deficit. Despite having the fifth largest defense budget, India procures 60% of its systems from foreign markets. Now look at this. More than 55-60% is what you are getting from the foreign markets. And you are at the same time the second largest arms importer. Imagine the kind of bill that uh, the government is receiving. You know, Again, like someone in the men uh, mentioned in the chat, that all of this money, if it were to be saved, you could invest it within the country. Rather than sending that money to say Russia or whatever country you are importing from, you could spend it on your people, you could spend it on your projects, you could sp spend it on your infra. Okay. So not just from the fiscal deficit, but also from the money required for your domestic purposes. Okay. Domestic purposes, it will help. You will save whatever money and you will invest it in the people. Okay. And at the same time, you're looking at exporting its defense to the neighboring nations plus friendly foreign countries, the FFCs. Okay. Like you must have seen now, we are sending, say, 
पर्टिकुलर हेलीकॉप्टर मॉडल्स टू मालदीव्स और यू आर सेंडिंग टू द एफ्रीकन नेशंस ऑल ऑफ दैट इज हेल्पिंग हाउ फर्स्ट प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड इफ इंडिया इज डूइंग दिस इट्स नॉट जस्ट गेनिंग द मनी आउट ऑफ द डील इट इज गेनिंग गुडविल आउट ऑफ द डील गुडविल टू काउंटर द अदर प्लेयर्स इन द मार्केट इंडिया सेंडिंग वैक्सीन इट डिट गेन एनी थिंग नो जीरो रुपीज वी गॉट बट we maintained a goodwill and and a relation that will now extend in the next 20 30 years the people there that present generation won't forget that india was the one that came forward to help them like i told you in yesterday's class when imf and world bank we discussed how critically important it is to support these nations the ones that are say not capable of developing their own tech their own infra right absolutely rajan well done this is the correct outlook in fact okay so this is why you will reduce your fiscal deficit at the same time employment generation and ecosystem creation this is very important guys if you are looking for change or if you are looking to say completely overhaul a particular policy framework you need to create ecosystem for it okay unless you create the basic facility that is required there is no point doing whatever you can okay so defense manufacturing will lead to the generation of satellite industries what are satellite industries so for example if you have a particular equipment now that equipment will require several things no say nuts and bolts okay spare parts say ammunition for it okay or other capabilities that can be added to it so look at it it's not just that a gun that you are making okay you will go you will create say uh, the sheath for it you will create the bullets for it all of that is what the ancillary industries the the satellite industries so if you create one product you are not just creating one product you are creating a host of other products investing in a host of other technology okay research and development in all of that is happening which means that innovation in the country will be given a massive boost okay so satellite industries will come up ancillary sectors will improve which will pave the way for generation of employment you will have more and more people that will be a part of this at present if you look at it the ordnance factory board okay ofb we'll discuss what ofb is <coughs> it's essentially the parent <coughs> sorry it's essentially the parent body for arms ammunition and all manufacturing of defense related equipment in india okay so now the ordnance factory board a government uh, organization obviously it has employs roughly around 80 85000 people 80 85000 people compare that to say what happens in uh, the united states or russia they employ more people than that why because their industry is thriving lots of people coming in lots of employment generation lots of export happening so it becomes like a primary uh, sector of the whole economy okay so rather than us spending money to buy equipment our focus should be that we spend money in the country from on our own people who will create products and then we sell them or probably transfer them to friendly foreign countries which means you will gain more money from there okay so look at it it's not just from the domestic perspective you're also looking at from the international perspective as to where your place is vis-a-vis -vis other countries when it comes to the defense equipments the defense industry the defense sector Oh great Rajan which city are you from Jabalpur is it Okay we'll discuss good let me know Rajan So as per estimates now look at this if you were to just reduce 20 to 25% in the import bill you are looking at additional how many jobs close to 2 lakh jobs Okay you have already 80000 people who are engaged in the process plus another 1 lakh 20000 2 lakh people are going to be a part of this So massive employment generation Okay and this is just from the manufacturing bit the defense design bit or the development bit kanpur okay okay all right so you're looking at not just from the design development manufacturing but also as a part of an ecosystem you have created something that will now exist for decades to come because defense is going to be paramount in the coming days you look at the different kind of geopolitical tensions that india is surrounded by on one side you have president xi jinping china is expansionist you know that okay today they are looking at arunachal tomorrow they'll look at sikkim then they'll look at kashmir it's understood it's an expansionist country so you need to be completely secure how long can you say that okay himalayas are this uh, big wall that exists between india and china no no longer 
technology now exists where you can if you have say a particular hill no i'll i'll just give you a brief example so technology now exists that suppose if these are the himalayas that side china this side india you have particular technology which in which you you are able to say dismantle this entire hill through a particular bomb okay so this is it no longer can you just say ki okay geography will uh, protect us okay that the himalayas will stand in the way of the chinese no <clears throat> that didn't stand in their way in 1962 now obviously they have improved their tech okay which means you need not just defensive capabilities but also offensive capabilities okay again on the uh, western side you have pakistan a country that is waiting to implode some day it will just implode off so can you afford to be weak in this sector no all infrastructure all development all capital aside if your defense is weak you can't be secure can you trust say your allies history tells us that the allies of today were our uh, enemies in the 70s or not enemies not exactly our friends okay so this keeps changing you know the friends of today may not be your friends say 10 20 years down the line can you completely rely on them for your national security would that be a prudent move not at all which is why go ahead invest in your own capability no much no matter how much money it takes no matter how much time it takes right yes absolutely i agree nala jana we are we have to be very very secure when it comes to our national security because again look at the whole geopolitical tensions around it myanmar military junta is there okay which is essentially in the hands of china sri lanka again you are looking at say how uh, china is looking to exploit sri lanka so we are getting covered from all sides can we afford to be weak militarily no not at all we are not a pacifist nation no we should be able to uh, respond back if we are threatened right as per estimates i told you so self sufficient and self reliant will augment india's global standing as a key stakeholder in the global supply chain before 2014 India was just looked at as a defense, import heavy defense uh, country, import heavy. Okay, then you had the Atma Nirbhar, the Make in India come up, and even now, even though we are import heavy, what you are looking at is a substitution happening. Okay, what hap? What is happening is that those particular equipment that we used to say source from other countries, X country, Y country, Z country. and not just don't look at the bigger uh, arms and ammunitions like just looking at sniper rifles or ak47 no small things nuts and bolts okay which make up the critical part of a particular defense equipment if you are having to get those also from the other countries the spare parts okay so in a war in a battle like situation what essentially is required is not that okay first wave goes and wins the war for you that never happens what is required is that okay the first wave of soldiers have attacked thereafter how quickly are you able to reinforce them with more arms more ammunitions more supplies which means you need defense which is backed by industry okay so this supply chain within the country also okay not just in the global uh, supply chain within the country also that needs to be very like strengthened a lot this is the primary accusation against india also that our defense industry integration make a note of this guys defense industry integration okay our defense industry integration is not up to the mark okay that we are wholly reliant on say the ofb the ordinance factory board which are now the dpscs i'll tell you what they are that we are wholly reliant on the ordinance factory board which is not able to do justice to what they could have done obviously there are sarkari organization they'll have their own red tapeism bureaucracy all of that but this is required you need better defense and industry integration industry not just in the public sector but also private sector if you look at some of the best weapons that are made you no know, they are made by the private sector and then given to the public sector so i'll give you a small example the country of uh, Bulgaria, Bulgaria or Belarus? I think it's Bulgaria. Small country, okay? They had something called the UBGL, okay? Under-barrel grenade launcher. 
it is supposed to be one of the most game changing equipments that has come in the warfare system okay if you have been playing all these pubg wubg no you will find this gun there so what is it a small country made expertise in developing a particular type of weapon and then started exporting it to the whole world which means that even one product if you are able to develop at a world class level okay your market uh, is reach is going to be 100 percent just one small country i'm giving you forget the f-16s and this and that the us does one small weapon under grenade barrel launcher something that you fire like this okay so that particular country i think it was bulgaria only that made it and now it's a prerequisite it's desired that each and every country has it because of the variability of its use so you see why defense indigenization is important that if you have to hit that one product also with world class excellence it will serve you well for the next 20 30 years for sure which is why immense thrust is being put on it of course bulbul that is true that is a fair criticism that we haven't paid attention to this sector but we'll identify what were the problems okay i understand the criticism and i agree with it also but the reasons behind that need to be identified especially from the upsc perspective okay <clears throat> so going forward security imperative like i told you given that india is surrounded by china here pakistan here myanmar here sri lanka here you can't have india in the middle which is just not uh, secure enough if we have to rely on say the global community to come bail us out what's the point huh? well, how can you claim to be a, a credible voice in the international fora if you can't take care of your own national security okay so indigenization and defense is critical to national security keeps intact that technological expertise and encourages spin off technologies and innovation right in a multipolar world in fact just a couple of days ago uh, one of uh, my colleagues here rahul saigaukar he made a video on multipolarity it's a very interesting video what does it mean that there are multiple power centers in the country in in the whole world what does it mean for the major powers russia uk uh, uh, russia and usa and the other players that are now coming up so china is coming up uh, india has come up australia is now asserting itself so in a multipolar world you can't rely on particular uh, countries anymore today's friend is tomorrow's enemy in geopolitics okay so in a multipolar world india being surrounded by porous borders and hostile neighbors the country needs to be self sufficient it needs to be atmanirbhar if it's not you are playing with the future of this country okay which is why this thrust you see you know under the make in india initiative the atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan it becomes of prime importance so why am i telling you all this because this is essentially the answer to the first part the first part of my question how are we going to make sure that our security is taken care of not just say physical security but economic security yes see nalajan i'll tell you what the thing that you're telling me that okay india can't invest in this because we have to spend on food and health and all of that you have to realize it's like apples and oranges okay just because you're spending in defense does not mean that you're not spending in this often you'll hear no that oh drdo is making say a rath for whatever uh, uh, the chariot for this rath yatra oh is that their job well no obviously it's not their job but if they are doing that it does not mean that they are not doing other things also a particular organization or a country just does not do one thing at a time okay so it's it's, it's again a very half baked criticism you have to tell me something identify what could be the problem if you were the chinese right now and if you know that india is short on critical equipments okay and yet they are transitioning to that ecosystem say in the next 10 years they will have the capability to develop their own arms think like a chinese what would they say why do you think doklam and galwan is happening all of a sudden okay obviously president xi jinping is full expansionist okay he wants to be emperor of the whole world fine understood but from the strategic point of view they understand that this country is little vulnerable right now and it will not be vulnerable once this ecosystem is in place once they will be able to identify the weaknesses that they have and address it so obviously india is little vulnerable in this period of transition why because you have already stopped buying weapons from outside you have given a wholesome thrust on making sure that your industry is developing 
So obviously the adversaries of India will take this as an opportunity, no? It's just common sense. Think from those point of view. Another example, I'll tell you in just two, three minutes. Okay. All right. So now let's look at the history of the Indians, Indian defense sector. Again, this is just to basically take you through the whole chronology of events that has happened so far. So again, we go back to the conflict with the China, uh, with China in 1962, where we were woefully found out. Okay. If you look at, there is, there is a book called uh, The Himalayan Blunder, I believe. I read that book where he says, the author says, uh, it's written by a, a retired uh, army general of India. He has said in the book that our soldiers did not have, say, clothing. Okay. The high altitude clothing that you need. If any of you have been in the higher reaches of the Himalayas, you will know that the temperature drops like that. Frostbite, this bite, that bite, very common. Okay. Okay. That is just for what you are wearing. After that, after you have say engaged in battle or if you have a headquarters somewhere just below the base camp that you can call, that needs to have proper facilities also. No, It needs to have rooms or areas where, student, uh, where our uh, soldiers can be kept warm. They need to have access to warm food, at least warm water. All of that is a necessity in the higher altitudes. Now, this was not there in 1962. In fact, in some instances, it is said that our soldiers were uh, fighting barefoot. Okay, that they were rationing their bullets because they knew they had lesser bullets. Do you want that to happen? That in a war, are you going to say, Naini, I'm going to fire only five bullets? Is this like uh, the Indian police force in action? No, because in army, in a war, you don't have to give counts of bullets. Okay, the police force does need to carry. If you have seen, the police essentially has to pick up the shells whenever they fire. No, they have to pick up the shells because then a thorough audit is done. How many bullets did you fire? How many shells were recovered? Indian Army also does that, say, during training time. But in a war, can you do that? Are you going to be picking up shells when you are actually combating at the enemy? No. So, in a war-like situation, you need this kind of capability where you have the resources. That resources is not a problem. All you need to focus on is going ahead and combating the adversary. Okay. So, this happened in 62 and this alerted India of her under-preparedness for war which led to increasing the defense expenditure. After 1962, what you notice is that suddenly India's defense expenditure goes up. Before that, obviously, because we had just come out from independence, our priorities were massive that time. A population that was uh, completely, uh, or you know, there was no like roadmap in place. Food was a problem, health was a problem. All of that was taken care of just after the independence. But the 62 war was a huge wake-up call. Like, okay, this is important, but at the same time, we need to look at our borders. Okay. Then again, in the 65 war with Pakistan, the US imposed an embargo on the export of arms, which led to the defense ties with the Soviet Union. Like I told you, today's friends are yesterday's enemies. There are no permanent friends, guys. Okay. No permanent friends. Even in Russia's case, you see now. Okay. Obviously, India-Soviet, India-Russia friendship is something that sets example for the rest of the world. But at the same time, now Russia is also engaging with Pakistan. Their military is in fact trained together. Okay. So, can you completely rely on Russia? No. After all, Russia's interests are Russia's interests. Indian interests are Indian interests. They might converge in certain areas. Certain areas we might converge. But can they be concentric circles? No. It's not possible. So, which is why it's important, it's imperative that you develop that ability and capability within your territorial boundaries. Okay. Over dependence on the Soviet Union for defense equipment forced a change in India's approach from license based to indigenous design based production. This is the massive change. We went from this license based to defense, uh, indigenous design based. Okay. So, now that you understood that, okay, there are no permanent friends. India's geopolitical vulner geostrategic vulnerability is high. We are surrounded by countries that don't like us. At the same time, we are transitioning from an import heavy defense industry to something that is uh, capable of self-sufficiency. Atmanirbharta is the thrust of the, of the defense industry. Now, let's go forward very quickly and look at this. So, the history now. In the 1980s, 
the government started pumping resources into R&D to help the Defence uh, Research Development Organisation, the DRDO, to undertake high profile projects. In fact, you had the APJ Abdul Kalam committee, the former president of India, the most loved president of India possibly. Okay. So, APJ Abdul Kalam Sahab led a particular uh, review committee, okay, the Self-Reliance Review Committee, which formulated a 10 year self-reliance plan and it proposed that from 30 percent we go up to 70 percent, okay, that indigenous products should account for at least 70 percent of our arms and equipments by the year 2005, okay. So, like look at this visionary man, he knew you know what would be and this is what when you are looking at it, this is 1992-93. In the 90s, APJ Abdul Kalam Sahab's review committee said go ahead, we need 70 percent of all our products to be made within India. The committee put forward some proposals, but like it happens with most, com most committee proposals and reports, well this was never achieved. Okay. So, this Atman Nirbharta in defense is not something that has come up in the last 10, 20 years. This is something that was thought of in 90s. In fact, even before that, there was a thrust on making sure that Indian defense was self-sustainable, that it would be able to produce equipment by itself. Bulbul, that is to do, see, that is to do with uh, espionage. What you are telling me about is espionage. Okay. So, you have, you will often find, no, that particular individuals who are in these sensitive postings, so, they will be uh, sharing information with the enemy countries and more often than not what happens is that this is followed, this is actually done through honey trapping, okay. This is done through honey trapping, again this is a different, this is not related to it but I will just tell you honey trapping is where you uh, basically, how do I put it, a person's weakness is exploited. You understand a person, you un read the person figure out where their critical vulnerability is and exploit it. For some individuals, it is money. For some individuals, it is lust. For some individuals, it is power. Or some individuals, it is posting. Every individual has a weakness. The moment you identify it, you exploit it. So, for those individuals who are posted in critical sensitive installations, well, obviously, a lot of counter surveillance is done. Okay. To make sure that their particular activities are not inimical to the interests of India. Ha, huh, Red Sparrow movie, yes, fair enough, something like that. Or in fact, even in uh, that movie, uh, John Abraham one, Chennai, I forget the name, Chennai something it was, it was a very good movie. It was on the LTTE and John Abraham was there in that movie, I forget the name. But that also had shown how the raw operative was honey trapped by the adversaries of India and then coerced into sharing critical information. So, for that obviously, there is a counter... Uh, what is it called? Counter surveillance. Counter surveillance is done. Surveillance is on the enemy. Counter surveillance is on making sure that our people are not colluding with the enemy. Madras, yes, yes, Madras one, correct. Madras cafe. So, Indian public sector units are frequent, well, this is obviously because it is India, no? So, we will have time and cost overruns, poor financial performance. All of this is a valid criticism of Indian companies that are in this particular uh, sector, okay. That not enough is being done in research and development. Even if something is a research and developed, please understand now, the, how it happens. So, if you are a scientist for, with say the DRDO, you develop a particular product, say B8 gun, okay, Bhuvan 8AM, okay. So, you develop this B8 gun. Now, it goes for extensive field trials, guys. What are field trials? where you test this particular gun in each and every situation that exists in India. So, you test it in high altitude, you test it in say ground sea level, you test it in the sand, you test it in each and every possibility that it exists where the gun can be used. After extensive field testing and trials, then it is integrated into the armed forces. So, you realize the long drawn out process just to develop this it will take you at least what? At least minimum 5 years. Field testing, another 2 to 3 years. So, what you are essentially looking at is to make even a small gun. A small gun also will take you at least 7 to 8 years to develop. Then integration, which means you need to scale production of this. So, another say 2 years. Look at it. It is a decade long project just to create one simple gun, dude. Guys, 
okay which is why this process is slow cumbersome most of the times what happens is even if a gun is developed it fails the field trials why is this important guys why are field trials important because eventually the guy the person the man or the woman who will be operating that gun it's a human life if your guns are not responsive in each and every climate and at, and and situation you are essentially playing with the life of the person who will be operating the gun it will not be the enemy who will be responsible for the loss of the life of that person it will be you which is why field testing and trials are critically important so i have given you a very short time frame you know 2 to 3 years is the like uh, uh, lesser uh, benchmark there better field testing trials take more time because eventually you are also changing your gun the b8 you are changing it in response to whatever sampling you do here that okay probably in high altitude the gun uh, gets jammed the bullets don't come out or something happens okay then you go back to the lab work on it address it then again take it to the high altitude okay it works in high altitude now but in the desert it does not respond to heat the metal expands something happens the gun is not firing again then again you go back to the lab you see this test trial test trial test trial process it's time consuming so this criticism no that oh the indian industry is slow and non responsive not everything is to do with red tapeism and bureaucracy that's like the you know what i'll tell you a small example in my school and college days no we used to have chemistry lab okay so my uh, friend there whenever he didn't know any answer in chemistry lab no in that viva he would straight away say grignard's reagent that was his go to answer okay so that is your red tapeism in bureaucracy should not become your grignard's reagent that if you can't think of anything you will just say red tapeism bureaucracy it does not work like that if you understand the criticality of the particular process what happens this is a major part of the whole process okay so red tapeism bureaucracy obviously it's like a preliminary answer any problem in india you can attribute to red tapeism bureaucracy but the more specific problem is that this process of field testing and trial is a long drawn process okay all right so what are the initiatives now what has the government done so far to address this whole situation that i've just told you okay defense production and export promotion policy the dpep 2020 two key words production and export promotion so not just in house but you're also looking at sending it outside okay so this is the primary text guys like i tell you no if you read the primary text you don't need to read anything else you will understand exactly from the horse's mouth so this is the primary text which provides a focused structured and significant thrust for production capabilities for self reliance and exports make sure you quote this policy if you are writing on the defense uh, indigenization process of india it's like the guiding light as to how we should go forward okay so the dap now the defense acquisition procedure why is defense acquisition important bofors when we bought bofors in there was a lot of human cry of say corruption this that again these are multi billion dollar deals so the scope of corruption is a lot which means there needs to be a standard operating procedure in place okay at the same time you are looking at what uh say even the rafal that had come in recently there was a huge hue and cry you know that okay there is corruption there is that all of that so to make sure that that doesn't happen it does not become a reality you need a certain exact standard operating procedure that this flow chart is to be followed if you are going to buy something from abroad okay it aims to empower indian domestic industry through make in india initiative lays down strict order of preference see i told you the standard operating procedure this flow chart that we are talking about okay so standard or order of preference for procurements and adequately includes provisions to encourage fdi establish manufacturing hubs three fold process guys not just the flow chart you are looking at fdi and you are looking at manufacturing hubs can someone tell me where in india are the defense industrial corridors you should know this where are the defense industry co industrial corridors in india i just told you know that defense industry integration is a problem 
India has that problem, which is why you came up with industrial corridors exclusively for defense. They will be going ahead making uh, products, arms, equipment, research, innovation, development, all of that in those particular areas. Let me know in the chat if someone knows where India's defense industry corridors are. Okay. So now let's look at a DAP, the whole procedure that I just told you about. Reservation in categories for Indian vendors. DPS use an ordinance factory board to have a short term and a long term outsourcing and vendor development plan to gradually increase the outsourcing from private sector. Short term. In two years, we plan to have say 10%. In the next 10 years, we are looking at say 50%. Why is this important? Because you are playing with national security here. Your each and every move uh, is out in the public domain. It's not just available to you and I as UPSC students who care for the country, who are learning this because they want to serve the country. This information is also available to the Red Army. This information is also available to the uh, Pakistan mercenaries. Okay. So you need a short term and a long term plan. So that if something happens in the next six months, well, you have plan B, something in place. And obviously long term because you know, porous borders, countries that are losing their mind as to why India is increasing so, gaining so fast, okay, all of that. Enhancement of indigenous content, minimum 30% is what is said. So, if you have a particular product, 30% of the uh, equipment in it should be done from within India. So, I told you know, all those small things, nuts, bolts, spare parts, okay. You have nipples, all of that are needed sheets all of this are what the ancillary part of a particular equipment all right so you need that also you can't just create a gun and not have bullets you can't create a missile and not have say the know-how to launch the missile or to make it armed you know you're not going to send diwali ke patake only you know like the prime minister says you need something that has of threat value that people will take seriously for that, you need the whole industry to work together in sync. Why do you think the Americans have such good weapons? Exceptional defense in industry integration. To the point where their foreign policy is now dictated by these fellows. Okay. This is one of the major criticisms also. That more, uh, more amalgamation, more amalgamation in terms of defense and industry. Uh, if the American example you were to take, their military, military industrial complex is so huge that it essentially is, it plays on their foreign policy. Which is why you see Americans going and engaging in wars and skirmishes and this and that everywhere. Why? Because the more America does that, the more business these fellows get. So this is the negative point of this further integration. You want it to a certain level, but not to a level where that integration is now affecting your foreign policy. Because the foreign policy needs to be independent from all of these considerations. Good. Good, Rajan. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the well, well thought out. Bhoot achha. Are you able to understand this, guys? The defense industry integration is important, but only to a certain level. You can't follow the American example at all. Not desired. So, for example, you see the Indian concept of restraint. Okay. So, we had, say, something as ghastly as the 2611 terrorist attacks in Mumbai. Okay. Like the whole conscience of the nation was shook. Everyone was like, you know what, let's go and show these people what we are made of. However, the prime minister of that time exercised restraint. Okay. In the long run, we followed the due, due process of law and the uh, terrorist was hung. But if you had this to the level what Americans had, well, we would have been invading the neighboring country the next day for sure. Okay. Consequences be damned. Let's go ahead and uh, show them what we are made of. So again, that, that is the negative point of further integration. You want it only to a critical level, not more than that. Okay. Rationalization of trial and testing procedures. Okay. Like I told you, long term process, it takes a lot of time because eventually it's the, it's your own soldier who is going to be operating these weapons. If these are not tested to the level that you want them, well, you are playing with the life of your own soldier. Okay. Recalibration of time frame. Make an innovation, design, development, creating an ecosystem. And then this, FDI plus industry-friendly commercial terms. 
Why? For the defense industry integration. The better you have uh, the processing capabilities, the better your uh, 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 military will be. Okay. In 2020, government announced increasing the FDI. Now it is at 74% through the automatic route and 100% through the government route in the defense sector. Know these facts and figures, guys, especially from the prelims point of view. That right now it is 74% through the automatic and through the government route, 100% you can go for that. Okay? All right, let's go ahead. So what has been done so far now? Now that we know about DAP 2020, let's go ahead and see what has been done so far. Four positive indigenization lists have been introduced by the government of India, the latest one coming in the month of May, last month. Around 14, 15 May, it was announced just before prelims. Okay. Huh. Bipin, that is the, uh, the, the, the thing that you're talking about is that the whole, uh, all armed forces are, the particular wings are stationed in Andaman. Okay. Tell me why they are in uh, Nicobar Island. What strategic purpose does it serve? What are you looking at to choke? What strait are you looking at to choke with India's whole uh, three arms now being stationed in Andaman Nicobar? Which country are you targeting by having that there? Think for a moment. China, Strait of Malacca is what you are looking to choke point? Because Strait of Malacca is what? Sir, after watching this, is need to read newspaper. See, uh, UPSC aspirant, what I do is I take a deep dive into a particular topic. Okay. And that deep dive is such that you are able to go from the prelims to the mains interview perspective. Okay. After that, if you read a newspaper, you will understand exactly what the whole article is talking about. Malacca Street. Okay. So, if you read the newspaper, it, it, this is the fundamental basis that you need to know. Okay. After that, if you read the article, it will be like, Achha, this is what he was talking about. But if you read the article first, then you're like, oh my God, what does OFB mean? What does DPSU mean? So, then you have to do double work. No? So, that's why I do this. I take a deep dive because understanding is important, guys. Okay. Most students read the newspaper thinking it is some pamphlet. There's a lot of information there that you need to comprehend, that you need to use and use in the actionable form. No? That's the whole point of this uh, examination, that the information that you have should be used rather than just knowing it. Okay. So that's what my whole thrust is. So four positive indigenization lists have been introduced, the latest one coming in the year May 2023. Okay. There would be an embargo on the import beyond the timelines indicated against them, which means these positive indigenization lists are to do with those arms, those equipment, which you cannot import at all and from a particular year. So, it will be said from 2026 onwards, you cannot import this particular thing from Russia anymore. So, in the next three years, develop the capability within the country to do that. Okay. Good, Rajan. Good. Okay. So, liberalization of FDI, like I told you, abhi 74% hai, 100% through government route. Okay. Mission Deaf Space, launch of innovation for defense excellence, IDEX, so, you are involving all of these. See, ecosystem creation, guys. This is ecosystem creation. This is how you are empowering the different facets to work together for defense indigenization. Not everything can be left to the ordinance factory board or the DPSUs, the defense public sector units. Because eventually, that is just 80,000 people who are working for you. And clearly, in the say, last 70 years, it hasn't de delivered to the level that you would have expected. Okay. Which is why you need to have private sector now come in. Let the private sector do some uh, particular job. Okay. Launch of indigenization portal. So, Srijan, you need a one stop place, no? A, a dashboard where you can go. Suppose if you are launching a startup, if you want to create a particular gun, if you have the know how that, okay, I can create a gun, I am going to develop a gun. But then, how are you going to approach? Are you going to write letters? No. What you are going to do is go on to this portal. Thereafter, introduce your product, give it the costing, what is the ro roadmap that you have, and then you will liaise with the other stakeholders in this process. So, a one-stop dashboard is needed. Okay. And the defense industrial corridors. One is in UP and the other is in Tamil Nadu. Okay. Please make a note of this. 
डिफेंस इंडस्ट्रियल कॉरिडोर एक्सक्लूसिव एरियाज विथ एक्सक्लूसिव फैसिलिटी फॉर कंटिन्यूस आर एंड डी फॉर मेकिंग श्योर दैट यू आर डेवलपिंग प्रोडक्ट्स विथ द एक्सपर्टीज दैट इज रिक्वायर्ड ओके सो डी एफ आई सीज हैव बीन डेवलप्ड इयर मार्किंग ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द आर एंड डी बजट फॉर इंडस्ट्री लेड आर एंड डी ओके प्रोग्रेसिव इंक्रीज इन एलोकेशन वट्स द डिफेंस बजट दिस टाइम गाइज हैज इट इंक्रीज और डिक्रीज इन कंपेरिजन टू लास्ट ईयर ऑल ऑफ यू मस्ट हैव स्टडीड नो द बजट एंड द इकोनॉमिक सर्वे वेन फेब्रवरी मार्च कम्स ऑल द स्टूडेंट वॉन्ट्स टू डिस्कस इज दिस ओनली हाँ सो यू मार्किंग ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द बजट फॉर इंडस्ट्री लेड आर एंड डी एंड देन प्रोक्योरमेंट फ्रॉम डोमेस्टिक सोर्सेज लेट मी नो वट्स द डिफेंस बजट दिस टाइम हैज इट इंक्रीज और डिक्रीज लेट मी नो दिस सो वट शुड बी दी वे फॉरवर्ड indigenization with private participation extend dedicated more of these are needed guys we currently we have what two or three i think only two we have more of this why again why do you need more why do you need more because the more that you have the more that you create then you are going to do what more r and d more employment okay faster defense industry integration all of this is served right defense entrepreneurs in policy making this will not happen though you know why because eventually everything in the country is in the hands of the ias and so they will only have to sign this and say you know what come let have private sector come and help us out that it's good for paper and answer writing but you know how it works okay so through streamlining procurement and shaking hands with new defense interpreters okay this you can write it for the answer there's also a need to give adequate attention to the promotion of exports not just from the national security perspective but also to making sure that it helps your own economy that your bill fiscal deficit will obviously is going to come down and now let's pause it go on the positive side give these uh, arms and equipments to other other countries do what say russia has done for the last 70 years or us has done you know what us does particular technology they will use it as a counterbalance to the other uh, 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 other countries so they'll say you know what x country i'll give you this particular thing then y country the neighboring country will be like oh my god why are you giving him that so they'll be like no no i have given him the offensive one i'll give you the defensive capability for this now see in hindi you call it chit bhi mera pad bhi mera both sides i'll win okay so offensive capability i'll give to pakistan and defensive capability for the same offensive capability i'll give to india see this is how you make use of your defense uh, equipments in your own ambitions in the global world order okay india is yet to do that why because first we have to develop the ecosystem the creation of ecosystem has to happen all right if you read about say okay forget it not important but if you read about say what us has done in the last 70 years vis a vis pakistan india just by defense imports and exports oh my god it's it's like a game of chess that it plays and the eventual winner in this game is us itself the house wins okay all right so now the questions that i have for you guys and please make a note of this slide okay why i'm calling it this slide is important is because all the other information is available in any domain okay it's it's the fundamental basis of the whole defense policy however these questions are not answered often by many articles which is why my assumption is that if you do not know these UPSC will probably ask you these okay they never ask things that are commonly known they'll ask your opinion your analysis especially in mains so the first one the approach of timeline based indigenization put pressure on the manufacturers what did i tell you that the pil the positive indigenization list has come it says that okay from 2026 suppose example okay the 2026 after 2026 you are not going to import say weapon x which means that in 2023 you have this information that okay x needs to be developed by us in the next 3 years right now imagine this whole process research and development field testing and integration are you compromising on this whole process just by giving a shorter time limit just 3 years okay will that basically let them cut corners they'll be like oh my god we have to do this in 3 years okay field testing will do in 6 months do you think that's going to be a problem that the equipments that we produce given that we have shorter timelines well are we going to create substandard weapons substandard weapons created which means the person who's operating it 
is at a risk? Do you understand this? This question will never be answered in any particular uh, newspaper article or anywhere. Okay? This is an inference that you draw from the whole process, which needs to be answered because there is an ethical dimension to it, guys. That someone's life is at stake. So, can you put pressure or compromise on someone's life just because you have to reach a target in 3-4 years? Not fair. Okay. Has India ill-timed its defense indigenization in the face of Russia-Ukraine conflict, especially given that we import a lot, in fact, a majority of our arms would come from Russia. Now that their own house is burning, that they are themselves involved in a major conflict, so are we going to be uh, compromised too? Because then we were completely dependent or at least wholly dependent or a majority of our dependence was on Russian imports. Okay. In this period of transition, is India more prone to aggression from its neighbours? The Doklam example, the Galwan example, and well, if Pakistan was not imploding, they would also try something. But then right now, they are imploding themselves. Okay. So, have we also ill-timed it? Why am I telling you these? It's not that I want you to answer them, but make a note of these questions. Because eventually, in the examination, if you are asked any of these, at least you should have an opinion, a viewpoint. You can't create an opinion on the spot. Okay? India investing in its hard power plus already existing soft power. See, we, our soft power is taken care of. No? We have cricket and yoga and well, Bollywood I don't include anymore. So, all of these. Our food, our cuisine, our culture, our traditions. Yes? So, that is our soft power which finds resonance across the world. Now that we are investing in our hard power, our military capabilities, does that signify the arrival of India as a major force in the global committee of nations? Again, answer that for yourself. Does this policy mark the arrival of India as a major stakeholder? That we are no more just the spiritual capital of the whole world. No. We are of course the spiritual capital, the land of Buddha, Mahavira, everything we are. But now we are also the land of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Okay. That given if you play with us, we are well capable of our own arms and ammunitions to dismantle you, to totally destroy you. Which is necessary for India. Why? Because India's ambitions now, the leader of the Global South looking for a seat in the United Nations Security Council, all of that can't be given just because your Chola Bhatura is famous in United States. No. No one cares. It needs to be that Indian hard power is equally as good as say the soft power. Thick? So, these questions are important for you to uh, analyze and understand. Alright, what's the time guys? 9.07. Okay, so what I'll do is, uh, on the next topic that I had planned, no guys, on the next topic, the Pandha Pandharpur Wari, I'll, uh, I'll do this video, watch this uh, uh, whole discussion on the Pandharpur Wari today itself at 9pm. Alright, because again, I've overshot my time limit. So, uh, before I wrap up guys, please make sure that you answer these questions, at least have an opinion. Okay, Have an opinion based on whatever facts that you can draw out of the whole thing. Now let's quickly go back to this uh, questions that I had for you and then I'll wrap up this small session. Alright, let's have a look at these now, very quickly. Successful defense industry is responsible for security but also for strategic leverage. The leverage example, I have given you ample examples. Okay. That hard power also needs to be developed. You can't develop hard power with bows and arrows. Okay. You need actually good military equipment, which is again sourced from within the country. Okay. So, security wise, obviously you understand. All of you will agree with me that security is imperative, which is why we need to do it. Yes, Bipin, I have in fact, uh, uh, yes, I will address that question. Give me two minutes, please. Bipin, bhai, two minutes. Okay. The next, let's look at this question. Right to bear arms was admitted as a fundamental right in the 1931 Karachi resolution, which is true, guys. Okay. This was admitted, this was a proposal in the 1931 Karachi resolution. However, the Constituent Assembly, the Constituent Assembly, thankfully, in their wisdom, said no, this will be on a may need basis. Today, if you, need an, uh, if you need a particular gun for your self-protection, there needs to be a valid reason that has to be countersigned by the superintendent of police and the district commissioner, the DC or the DM. Okay. So, you see, right to bear arms does not exist. It is only provided to you if you have a valid reason 
which is judged by a report of the SP and the final authority is the DM, the DC. Okay. So, this is true by the way. First ordinance factory board was set up in West Bengal. The Dutch had set up in fact. Okay. The Dutch had set up at a place called, I believe, Ichapur. Okay, Ichapur, the Dutch had set up the first factory in India. All companies of the OFB, the Ordinance Factory Board, are now DPSUs. Absolutely correct. Okay, this has been done in the last uh, couple of years. So, there were total 41 entities in the Ordinance Factory Board. Like uh, my friend Rajan told me that in Kanpur there are some, in Jabalpur there are some. 41 of them exist throughout the length and the breadth of the country. Now, they have been changed into seven particular DPSUs. All of them have been essentially made public sector units. Okay? So, here all the statements are true. All of them are true. Okay? Go ahead and read about this. It's very interesting. Again, not something that is commonly known. Okay? Yes, OFB were converted into DPSU. Now, to answer your question, Bipin, uh, I have spoken to my uh, authorities, my management here, and we are considering to increase the time of this particular session to at least 90 minutes to 120 minutes. In fact, uh, the large majority of you who were there in my uh, telegram channel, the poll that I had introduced, most of you in fact wanted the session to be longer. So, I have approached my uh, seniors here and they have uh, given me an in, in principle approval. We are just working out the modalities and so hopefully we will in uh, increase the time period of this. Okay. So, for those of, those of you who are wanting to join my telegram group, and, and figure out more of these interesting discussions, guys. Okay, newspaper analysis should just not be about reading a newspaper. It should be about making sense of what's there in the newspaper. What information can you draw from there? And how can you use it in the examination? Okay, you journalist, you have to be officer. Okay. So, uh, join my telegram channel again. It's, it's just taken off. We have a lesser number of members, which is fine. I'm not here in, for the numbers game. I'm here to serve. Even if I serve one student, it does my job. Okay. So, join me in my telegram channel and uh, I will be uploading all the PDFs of all the lectures that I do here. Uh, normally, I upload them by say noon between 12 to 12.15 and uh, all the other uh, lectures that I do, especially in the 9 p.m. slot. Okay. I have the 8 a.m. slot and the 9 p.m. slot. So, the 9 p.m. slot also, you will find all information, all PDFs of whatever I do in that particular telegram channel. Now, uh, before I quickly wrap up guys, just a small announcement and a last announcement in fact, since uh, the course is beginning in a couple of days time, well this is your last chance to join me. I have a couple of students from this very batch, Bulbul in fact has informed me that she is joining us for this uh, P2I course, the prelims to interview course where we take care of the whole segment for you. you know, your, your preparation is our responsibility, all you need to do is be honest in your efforts. Baki mein dekh lenge. Theek hai? Sure, nala jana. I will bring more articles. That's the whole point. But you see, the depth that we go in, if I start discussing in depth if each and every article, then my whole lecture will go up till 3-4 hours. And so, I can't have a student give 3-4 hours to understand so many topics per day. The recall value bhi kam ho jata hai. Theek hai? So, lesser topics but deep dive. So, join me for this guys. Because the thing is, this is beginning on the 19th. And the best part about this is that after you have cleared your prelims, you know, you have the option of coming and joining us here uh, in New Delhi. You have free uh, boarding. You don't have to spend another penny from your pocket. And at that time, those three, four months, those critical time period, no, you will be coached like 24-7. That time, most of us won't be visible in, in the YouTube uh, realm. Most of us will be serving those students who are with our P2I batch. So, if you are again interested, well, this is the last call for boarding, you know, we have another 48 hours to go before we start this and so use the code BA live because this essentially gives you an offer of 40,000 rupees and given that this whole course is for 2999, 30,000 rupees only, if you compare it to say the other market leaders of the UPSC coaching industry, well, they do charge an exorbitant rate, you know. And so, I've always said this to my students that your preparation should not hamper the financial sustainability, the financial security of your family. It makes no sense whatsoever. Okay. Because I know of many families who have been devastated because they overspent in, in the uh, education of their kids, especially when it came to UPSC prep. It makes no sense. That is just looting. You know, you shouldn't loot people. Give them value for money and give them a price point that is 
viable for all so which is why this course has been started by study iq ias now if you are comfortable in hindi language well you have a course in hindi language if you are comfortable in english a mixture of hindi english for the content delivery that's also there but i will be responsible primarily with the english batch because again i like i am proficient in english okay all right guys so uh, that is it for today please before going please leave me a like okay uh, because these are again the minor small happiness that a uh, faculty gets so leave me a like subscribe to this channel and make sure to join me every morning right now for the time being at 8 am eventually i will make sure that we start this a little early say around 7:30 so that we can go up up till 9 am theek hai all right thank you for joining all of you thank you for being so kind with your statements for being so participative in this discussion you know it it really motivates me when teacher uh, students come in and tell me their answers and and i can interact with them this is what you want as a mentor okay all right i'll uh, see you guys on monday okay today saturday so happy weekend all of you make sure you don't chill out a lot study okay go through these articles go through the newspaper and if you have any particular doubts that you would like me to address well my telegram channel is always there theek okay? hai have a good day